everyone. Today's video is going to be a med surge lecture on magnesium imbalances. So let's jump right in. So let's get started by talking about what magnesium is. Magnesium is an intracellular cation. Intracellular meaning that it lives inside of the cell and cation meaning that it is a positively charged electrolyte. It is the most abundant intracellular cation after potassium. Magnesium is found in bone cells, specialized cells of the heart, liver, and skeletal muscles. It is, however, stored mostly in bones and cartilage. Only a small amount of magnesium is found in the extracellular fluid. Magnesium enters the body through the gastrointestinal tract, is regulated by the parathyroid hormone, and is excreted out of the body by the kidneys. So how does magnesium function in the body? Magnesium has many functions. It assists with the transmission of nerve impulses and muscle excitability. Magnesium activates the functioning of B vitamins, potassium, calcium, as well as several enzyme systems and helps with the metabolizing of carbohydrates and proteins. Magnesium also acts on the cardiovascular system by causing vasodilation. Most importantly, I want you all to remember that magnesium works in the body as a sedative. Always remember that knowing how an electrolyte functions is going to help you to understand the type of symptoms you'll see in a patient with too little or too much of the electrolyte in the body. Now, a normal magnesium level ranges from 1.3 to 2.1 milliequivalents per liter. When there is a lower than normal serum level of magnesium, this is classified as hypomagnesemia. When there is a higher than normal serum level of magnesium, this is called hypermagnesemia. So now that we have an understanding of what magnesium is, let's begin by talking about hypomagnesemia, which is when there is a serum magnesium level below 1.3 milliequivalents per liter. Let's first go over some potential reasons why hypomagnesemia may occur, starting with alcohol abuse. Ethanol, the main ingredient found in alcohol, acts as a diuretic, which pulls magnesium and other essential electrolytes out of the body, eventually depleting the amount of magnesium that the body has stored. Now, some instructors may teach you that hypomagnesemia could be caused by alcohol withdrawal. This is also true. This is because when an individual withdraws from alcohol, Free fatty acids increase, which may result in a decrease in plasma magnesium. Other etiologies of hypomagnesemia may include severe renal disease, sepsis, severe burns, severe malnutrition, pregnancy-induced hypertension, intestinal malabsorption syndrome, drug-induced diuresis, hyperaldosteronism, prolonged nasal gastric suctioning, physical stress, as well as a high calcium or protein intake. Remember that magnesium acts as a sedative, so if there is too little or not enough magnesium in the body, this will cause symptoms of excitability such as tachycardia, cardiac arrhythmias, neuromuscular irritability, which is usually evidenced by positive Chavostex or Trousseau sign. Your patient may complain of pins and needles of the extremities. There may be cramping of the legs and feet, as well as tremors, tetany, altered mental status, hyperactive deep tendon reflexes, dysphagia, or seizures. To medically correct hypomagnesemia, the patient may be given magnesium salts either orally or parenterally. Magnesium-rich foods may also be encouraged. You could teach your patient about foods that are rich in magnesium, such as green leafy vegetables, whole grains, nuts, cocoa, chocolate, soybeans, seafood, dried peas, and beans. If your patient has a severe magnesium deficit, magnesium sulfate may be prescribed intravenously. So let's talk about some things you would do as the nurse to care for the patient with hypomagnesemia. You should first assess. Assess for arrhythmias and early signs of neuromuscular irritability. Again, assessing for neuromuscular irritability can be done by testing for a positive Chavostex or Trousseau sign. You're also going to want to assess your patient's level of cognition. Now, this is very important. If your patient is receiving magnesium sulfate via IV, you're going to want to monitor your patient's blood pressure closely for hypotension. Because remember we said earlier that magnesium causes vasodilation. Now, if you remember back to anatomy and physiology, vasodilation leads to a decrease in blood pressure. So hypotension may be a sign that your patient is experiencing a toxicity from the magnesium sulfate. 
Also, keep in mind that anytime a patient is being supplemented for an electrolyte deficit, this puts them at severe risk for toxicity of the electrolyte that is being corrected. So for example, in this scenario, your patient is being treated for low magnesium. Administering magnesium sulfate puts them at risk for hypermagnesemia, which is too much magnesium in the body. For this reason, the nurse should be aware of the antidote for magnesium sulfate, which is calcium gluconate. Now, if the patient begins to experience dysphagia, you will want to consult with the physician, dietitian, or speech therapist. They may require you to crush your patient's medication or administer meds parenterally or interally. Now, we're done discussing hypomagnesemia. Let's move on to hypermagnesemia, which is when there is a serum magnesium level above 2.1 milliequivalents per liter. Now, let's go over some etiologies behind hypermagnesemia. Patients with renal failure may experience hypermagnesemia since the kidneys may not be able to adequately excrete magnesium in the urine. Because as we said earlier, magnesium enters the body through the GI tract but is excreted in the urine. So being able to eliminate magnesium may be a problem for patients with renal failure. Other causes include Addison's disease, which is also known as adrenal insufficiency, excessive use of antacids or laxatives that contain magnesium, as well as hyperparathyroidism. When you assess the patient with hypermagnesemia, you may find flushing of the skin, which is redness of the face, neck, and upper chest due to increased blood flow. Skin may also be warm to the touch. And remember we said that magnesium is a sedative, so too much magnesium is going to slow everything in the body down, causing you to see symptoms such as nausea and vomiting, muscle weakness, lethargy, bradycardia, drowsiness, decreased deep tendon reflexes, respiratory depression, coma or cardiac arrest may also occur if the hypermagnesemia is severe. All right, medical management of the patient with hypermagnesemia. Some possible medical interventions may include decreasing the patient's magnesium intake by mouth. If the patient is receiving magnesium sulfate parenterally, the healthcare provider may discontinue the order. If the hypermagnesemia is severe, the patient may be prescribed hemodialysis and mechanical ventilation if respiratory failure occurs. Last but certainly not least, we're going to discuss what you can do as the nurse to help the patient with hypermagnesemia. Also, the PDF to this video will be down below in the description, as well as the link to download the lab values you need to be successful in med surge. The nurse should measure the patient's vital signs frequently and notify the healthcare provider if there are any changes, especially in respiratory rate, rhythm, and depth. This could signal possible respiratory failure. If your patient is prescribed emergency dialysis, you may be instructed to insert a central venous catheter. If your patient has hypermagnesemia due to excessive antacid or laxative use, teach him or her to only use them as prescribed. You're also going to want to monitor your patient's labs to assess if therapy has been effective. Okay everyone, that brings this video to an end. Please be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Remember to never give up, and as always, thanks for watching.